So let's start by modeling our first object using the sub D tools in Rhino. We're going to start with what are called sub D primitives. And I've got a new fresh Rhino 7 file open to begin with. I'm just going to jump into this perspective mode over here. And I am going to start by modeling a sub D plane. So make sure you go into the sub D tools tab in Rhino 7 and click on the create sub D plane object just here. When we click on it, we're going to be asked as we would be to draw a plane um, it, normally in Rhino with a bunch of options as to how we want to draw, um, draw it. I'm going to do a typical draw of it. Um, just note that you get the option to add X and Y counts, which is basically the divisions um, of your sub D, uh, sub D geometry. So I'm just going to go and click in space and I'll make uh, my geometry maybe 100 by 100 millimeters and hit enter. Um, I might just change to shaded mode so we can see that more clearly. So you see that I've got a division of 2 in the X and 2 in the Y direction on my base geometry. I'm also going to create a sub D box. So I'm going to click on sub D box up here. Um, I'm going to change my X, Y and Z count to 1, 1 and 1. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a box like this approximately the same size. And you'll see straight away that I don't actually get a box output. Um, I'm getting a sphere. So why is that? Basically, sub D geometries have kind of two representations that we can view in Rhino. One is a smooth version of our geometry, um, which is representing that kind of continuous representation of a curved geometry. And the other is the base geometry, which is the more jagged, low resolution version of our um, sub D model. And to toggle between these uh, types of geometries or these previews, we can just hit the tab button in Rhino. So now you'll see the cube that I initially draw and the flat plane that I initially drew. And when I tab again, you'll see them both smoothed out. So objects with higher levels of division will not smooth as significantly as ones with lower um, amounts of division. So it's really important to take note of your X, Y, and Z count for your geometries that you're creating. So for example, if I go and create a um, another sub D box and I change my X count to 10, my Y count to 10, and my Z count to 10, and I'll just draw it over here, we get you know about a similar looking box when I but when I hit the tab button, this guy smooths out to basically a sphere. Uh, and this one retains its shape because it's got all these control points that are, you know, basically preventing the smoothing from occurring holistically around the entire object. So generally speaking, low resolution primitives are much easier to quickly work with and sketch. Um, once you get to a higher resolution, it's really difficult to easily manipulate your base geometry. When I'm modeling, I usually always begin with a box or a plane uh, because I find them the most easiest to manipulate into other types of geometry. But there's a whole collection of other primitives that we can use to start with in sub D that we can look at right now. So we could come up to this tab and we can create a sub D cone. And once again, you'll have all these options that enable you to control the resolution of these objects. I'm not going to bother right now because I just want to do a quick demo of this. Um, so our cone will look something like that and we can toggle between smoothed and um, unsmoothed mode with the tab key. Um, we've also got a truncated cone, very similar tool but just with the top taken off. Um, we have the opportunity to create a sub D cylinder. We can also create a sub D sphere. Just move that over here. And we can also create an ellipsoid, a disordered sphere, if you like. And the last one that we haven't looked at yet is the sub D torus. It looks something like that. And you can see how that looks as you toggle between smooth and unsmooth geometry types. So those are the base primitives that are available to us uh, in the sub D toolkit with Rhino. And everything you model will start from one of these things. Um, and it's about how you manipulate the geometry to create something else that is most important with these tools. So I'm going to delete a few of these things. Um, I'm going to keep the sphere and my initial um, cubes over here. So to quickly model sub D objects in Rhino, we need to make efficient use of something called the gumball tool. And you'll probably be familiar with this if you use Rhino quite a bit. Um, but you can turn the gumball tool on down here. So you just come down and left click on gumball and it'll go bold. And now when I click on an object, you'll see I get this little icon. 
that is basically a little transformative icon. It's going to allow me to um, click on you know, the arrows and drag my geometry along a defined axis. So in this case, this is the Y axis, along the X axis, or even along the Z axis. Uh, we can also rotate our geometry, um, or we could even scale our geometry using the gumball tool. So that's a really helpful tool because it saves us having to type up here, you know, like scale in the command line to manipulate all of our objects. And because we're going to make so many small manipulations when we're modeling in SubD, it's really important for us to have the gumball on to quickly make those changes um, on the fly. One other tool I highly recommend you turn on when you're sub-D modeling is the grid snap tool here. You'll find as you model in sub-D that um, accuracy becomes less of a major issue for you or less of a goal. Generally in Rhino you're modeling for accuracy because you're trying to make or fabricate the things that um, you're outputting. But with sub-D modeling it's more of like a sketching tool. Um, so if I turn on the grid snap and I scale things, it just gives me a little bit of accuracy in case I want to get um, things into a reasonably um, correct location, but also still enables me the flexibility of freeform modeling, just you know dragging things by moving, scaling, and rotating. The other really important trick to know about the gumball tool is something called the shift control click tool. Um, which allows us to select into a piece of geometry. And you might be familiar with this because it exists in typical Rhino geometries um, as well. But basically, if I shift control and click on the top of this uh, cube I've got here, or this box, I'm able to select the top face only, which gives me the ability to easily manipulate only that top face. So I could move it, I could rotate it, or I could scale it and I'm holding down shift to do a uniform scale, but I could also do a one directional scale by letting go of shift. I can also uh, extrude objects by hitting on that little circular button there. So that's a really important tool. It can work on edges as well. We can move, you know, particular edges, uh, and we can also move vertices in our sub-D geometry. So this is what I was talking about before, um, where it's much easier to manipulate a low resolution uh, sub-D object than it is to manipulate a high resolution. Say for example if I wanted to scale this one up in the Z direction or just move this top face up, I could shift control and click and easily move it up. But if I wanted to do the same for this one, I suddenly have to go through and select all of these guys. If I don't get them all, I get an object that starts to look a bit distorted and ugly. So it's really important to try and keep your sub-D modeling as low resolution as possible as you're going. So one last really important tool I want to talk about with um, the gumball is if we right click on the gumball down here, we actually get a few settings that we're able to uh, turn on and off. So we can easily turn the gumball on or off. There's a few reset gumball options as well that you can look into up here. But most importantly, what we're interested in is these alignment gumball options. So right now we're currently aligning to an object. And what that means is if I shift control click on say this face my gumball aligns specifically to that face um, and we can see this more profoundly if we actually click on the sphere so if i go shift control click you see my gumball now aligns to the face of that sphere so if i shift control click on that again and i right click on gumball i also have the option to align the gumball to the c plane which is this preview plane we've got here in rhino so if i change that I can easily you know, go and align back. So when we want to move things uh, in X, Y, and Z based on the world coordinates, we would either go to our C plane or align to world. And if we wanted to align to an object, we would change it to object. So this is really important. If I wanted to you know, extrude this face using this circle tab, it's way more likely I'm going to want to do it in the normal direction of this surface than I am to want to do it in the C plane direction uh, like this, okay? So it's important um, just to be aware that you can swap between those things and we will do this a lot as we go through uh, and model in sub D. So just remember aligning to the C plane or world is going to give you a much more defined X, Y and Z um, directional transform and aligning to the object is going to align to the very specific object that you're selecting in your tools. So to get the hang of some of the different sub-D tools, we're going to model up a collection of abstract objects based on a descriptive adjective. So the adjectives I've chosen for this tutorial include squashed, ribbed, splayed, crossed, and pinched. 
Um, and we're going to try and model something up that represents these adjectives just to get a feel for these tools. You can, of course, choose your own adjectives and practice as you go as well. So to do this, I'm just going to start a new Rhino file. So I'm going to go File, New. I'm not going to save changes to that. And I'm going to go Large Objects Millimeters. And we'll go from there.